Hey everybody, today we are going to review commas. You are going to have a quiz over commas on Friday, April 30th. So we are going to just briefly review these rules together. So the first rule of commas says when writing dates, place a comma between numbers that are side by side so that it is clear that they are separate. For example, today is April 19th, 2021. It has a comma between the 19 and the 2021 so that those two numbers are separate. Do not place a comma between the month and day. Do place a comma between the day and year. So for example, if we look at this first sentence, it says Dave went to Hawaii for the first time on April 4th. We do not put a comma because we never put a comma between the day and the month. The next sentence says Dave went to Hawaii for the first time on April 4th, 2014. We do not put a comma between April and 4 because we don't put a comma between the month and the day. However, we do put a comma between the day and the year, 4 and 2014, because in this case, we have two numbers that are side by side, so we want to make it clear that they are separate. Let's look at this example. The directions say add or remove commas if necessary until the sentence has correct punctuation. Zachary returned from the soccer tournament on April 10th, 2012. Take a moment and think to yourself, where does the comma need to go? The comma should go after the 10 and before the 2012, because in this case, we have a date with two numbers next to each other. And when that happens, we need to make sure that there is a comma between the day and the year so that we know those numbers are separate. Here's another example. Until October 8, 2014, Marcella had never seen a shooting star. Take a moment and think to yourself if you need to add or remove commas. In this case, we do not need to change any of the commas. The sentence is already correct. We have a comma in between the 8 and the 2014 because in this date we have two numbers side by side that we need to separate with a comma. Now don't be confused by the comma after the 2014. That is there because of the sentence structure. It does not have anything to do with our rule about dates. Our next rule says use a comma to separate three or more items in a series. For example, I am packing my shirt, shorts, and shoes for the trip. In this example, there are three items in the sentence, and so I'm separating them with a comma. So let's look at the image below. It says, do not use commas to separate two items in a series. Frank ran in circles and jumped up and down after hearing the news. We do not use a comma because there are only two items. We only use commas when there are three or more items. So if we look at the next example, it says Kyle wants to climb a tree, chase butterflies, and nap today. In this case, there are at least three items in the series, and so we will separate each of those items with a comma. Placing a comma between the last two items makes it clear to the reader that each item is separate. So we always want to make sure to use commas to separate three or more items in a series. Let's look at this example. Again, it says add or remove commas if necessary until the sentence has correct punctuation. Either the plumber, my poodle, or Nala ate the last blueberry muffin. Take a moment to think to yourself, where do you need to add or remove commas? We need to use commas to separate the three items in a series. So I put a comma after plumber and poodle. And this separates the plumber, my poodle, or Nala, which are three items in a series. Let's look at another example. I can't decide if I want to go outside, eat dinner, or watch a movie. Think to yourself, where can you add or remove commas? In this case, we can keep the comma after outside, but we need to add a comma after the word dinner, because in this case, we do have three items in a series. We have to go outside as one item, eat dinner as another item, and watch a movie as a third item. 
So we need to separate each of those using commas. Our next rule says place a comma between two adjectives only if the word and can be used and the order of the two words does not matter. For example, her brilliant creative nature was adored by colleagues. So in this case, we put a comma in between two adjectives, the word brilliant and creative. I know that I can put a comma there because if I replace the comma with the word and, it still makes sense. Additionally, if I swap the words and I say her creative brilliant nature was adored by colleagues, once again, it still makes sense. So let's look at this example. Again, it says add or remove commas if necessary until the sentence has correct punctuation. The two wise monkeys are at the zoo. Take a moment to think to yourself if you need to add or remove any commas. In this case, we would actually need to remove the comma entirely. Even though two and wise are both adjectives, I cannot replace the comma with the word and. It would say the two and wise monkeys are at the zoo. That would not make sense. So in this case, we would get rid of the comma and we would just say the two wise monkeys are at the zoo. Our next example says, I want a golden salty pretzel from the shop. Take a moment to think to yourself, do you need to add or remove any commas? In this case, we would keep the sentence as is. We would keep a comma between golden and salty. Golden and salty are both adjectives. I could replace the comma with the word and and the sentence would still make sense. Likewise, I could swap golden and salty, and I could switch them. And again, this sentence would still make sense. Our final rule says, use a comma on both sides of a person's name when addressing them. For example, thank you for inviting me, Susie, but I have other plans. Commas tell readers where to pause in a sentence. When speaking to someone directly, surround his or her name with commas to show a natural pause. For example, I'm telling you, Jameson, that was the biggest cat I've ever seen. In this case, we will put a comma before Jameson's name and after Jameson's name because we are addressing him directly. Additionally, we have another sentence that says, Carol, do you know where my water skis are? In this case, I am talking to Carol, but I'm only going to put a comma after the word Carol because Carol is the first word of the sentence. Do not use commas when mentioning a name, but not actually addressing someone. So for example, if we said Larry met up with Gwendolyn at the music festival, we would not use any commas because we are not talking directly to Larry or Gwendolyn. We are just talking about them, so we don't need to use a comma. Let's look at another example. The directions once again say add or remove commas if necessary until the sentence has correct punctuation. Is Soraya asking Alyssa to join the chess club? Think to yourself if you need to add or remove any commas. In this case, we would actually need to get rid of all the commas because we are not talking directly to Soraya. We are only talking about her. So in this case, Soraya's name does not need any commas surrounding it. Let's look at another example. Really, Harry Potter, I think you should bring bug spray on the camping trip. Take a moment to think to yourself if you need to add or remove any commas. In this case, we can leave the sentence as is. In this sentence, we are talking directly to Harry Potter, so we will put a comma before and after Harry Potter's name because we are talking directly to him. So now what you are going to do, you are going to spend the next five minutes practicing commas on No Red Ink. So you will go to noredink.com, you will sign in, and you will look for the assignment labeled practice commas. And I want you to practice that now for at least five minutes, and then you can move on.